Here we go, everybody happy? Cool. Hi, it's Johnny from Isaac, and we are back in the treehouse again for another <laughs> episode of Isaac Chats. Why are you And laughing? today, I am joined by the laughing George Bakari <laughs> and the beautiful Natalie Gavin. How are we doing, guys? That's how a northern presenter sounds like. That's what a northern presenter sounds <laughs> like. I'm all right. Like. I'm good. Are you good? Yeah. Oh, you not? Yeah, I'm all right, you know. You're all right, you know? Yeah. You're She's very right. busy at the moment. She's very busy. Well, yeah. we're going to get to all that. <laughs> we're going to get to all You can tell them all about it, Jenny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> She's extremely busy. We're lucky to have her here. <laughs> oh, <good. laughs> I thought, guys, that we've just got this new place set up, and I just thought it'd be nice to get you in. Chill out. Show your faces. Hear what you've been doing a bit. We've not had you on before, George. No. Um, he's a newbie. He's a newbie. Yeah. We've had that on before. So I just thought it'd be kind of nice to say hello to a new studio, get you guys in, and just have a little bit of a natter, really. Well, it's funny for us, because we've seen this studio develop over a year, mm. to, from being derelict to this absolutely beautiful space. So it's nice to see it. It's, and it's not even at its end yet, is it? No, not at all. I mean... In the next 10 days, when you guys are back for the party, there should be big changes happening in the next 10 yeah. days to make it look like a lot different. Um, but then even after that, we want to do loads of stuff like sort out new windows so it can be soundproof. I love it. Uh, lights for the stage and uh, green screen. We're going to get a proper bar fitted at Christmas. Yeah, you could do with a little sound studio. Oh, we've got, a, we've got an audio booth. Oh, have you got an audio, got an audio booth? booth? Oh, so you've like acquitted to... Every, you're allowed to swear, are you allowed to swear on this? Yeah. Oh yeah, so you're, you're acquitted to... Acqu acquitted? Equipped. equipped for everything. Oh, that's me. I know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, just like, yeah. You are equipped, George. <laughs> you are, though. You've got everything, a little bit of everything, isn't yeah. it? We've done all right. We've done all right. And when we came a year ago, it was literally a shit all. We said studios. Wasn't, it had that eclectic. That's a good word. She's making it sound hey, creative. Yeah, cool. you had that. It were that sort of industrial. It was cool. Yeah, well, I think yeah. it was a shit all. I think a lot of people that did come here, even though I agree with you, it was a shit all, it always had that. Eerie. Yeah, something about it, as in, like, yeah. The potential. Yeah, for sure. The potential, for sure. Um, but anyway, enough about us. George, I want to start off with you, baby. Yeah. <laughs> start off with George. George. How long have I'll you got? Here. <laughs> you can talk. How long have you got, mate? I know, innit? Well, not that long since you were both late. Uh, well, I wasn't late. I was on time. Natalie decided to turn up 40 minutes late because she thinks she can now. Um, That's not true. That's right? not true. It Attitude. was traffic. 20, it was 20 minutes there, I apologised, and it's because, you know, it's so beautiful and rural around here. I reckon she's parked around um, corner just waiting to be late so she could turn up on it. I knew you'd have something to say about it. <laughs> um, what, what do you want to know? I suppose that main thing about chats is I just want to know, like, what people's drive and how it starts, because okay. it's always different. But I think the more that we start figuring out about why we all no. do this, the better idea we're going to get. Well, people are always surprised when they ask that, and I tell them. Because I think they think that is just natural. Anyway. I don't think I know. No, a lot of, I don't tell a lot of people. Basically, I lost my dad when I was nine and didn't br breathe over it for many years. And then starting at the age of 12, my behaviour started to deteriorate really badly at school and literally all the way through getting expelled and going to different schools. And this head teacher at the time uh, was, was an actor before he was a head teacher, before he was a teacher, and said, I think we need to channel his energies mm. so i'm going to put him into drama therapy so he can finally breathe of his dad and literally just fucking playing with kites and like um you know like fire wind and like it would be an, a session uh, a week an hour with these drama therapists and play therapists where I'd, I'd, be, I'd learn how to play again because trauma was inflicted to me at such a young age that i stopped being able to play yeah just stopped development and altogether. held it in yeah, yeah. so yeah. then the, the play therapist helped me to start to play again and then when uh, they introduced me to a drama therapist, then it started to be creative with the kites and telling stories through kites. And then my behavior settled down and literally I left school with just an A star in drama. The rest of them were like, ease. So it's I just thought, me. yeah, yeah it always it's happens. Same, so yeah. then I thought, well, I love this and I don't want to stop playing with kites. And um, it was I saw you were in a car park earlier yeah. on, and I thought, what the hell is he doing? Before coming in, just kiting. <laughs> but, um, 20 minutes late, yeah. George! <laughs> no, I had to just wheel it in, Johnny. But, no, um, but no, that's how it started, and then I went to college and just decided that it's the only thing I think I'm good at, and the only thing what makes me happy, and then I just ended up going to drama school. And when I went to drama school, I was the only working class guy in the year the rest of them were from middle class upper class like mm. really rich families you know and i was just this you know council estate kid from manchester my hometown just repping it up and i was a re i was a right rebel in drama school and they always said to me the drama school um teachers that i'll never work 
fuck. They always say that. They the always that do, do that, yeah, yeah. They? And, they um, that and that's, that's how it do. started, yeah. That's actually a really beautiful story, yeah, yeah. Yes. isn't it? Yeah. It explains a lot as well, like, I mean, we obviously know that a part of all this is it's like we go through shit and like the only difference between actors is we learn how to kind of bottle it up and reuse it, mm. don't we? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And it's like, like you say, it is almost like it's a really beautiful grieving process yeah. for, on, on all aspects. Yeah. Because you just, you give them permission to kind of go, well, I know what this feels like and being human is struggling to deal with it, whereas acting is trying to figure out how to deal with it. Yeah, and, and I think that's, I think actors are generally like sponges. Yeah. They're emotional sponges. They're the most sensitive creatures out of all human, man, you know, mankind. They're just very sensitive. Open. And open. Because yeah. we've got to see it from the other side as well, haven't we? We've got to put ourselves in other people's shoes and situations. Yeah. So when we do come across um, a situation, we, we see it from all sides before we act. Yeah. yeah. I feel like I've definitely grown in that. When and before, when I were younger, I'd be a rocket, poof, straight yeah. in there yeah. with whatever I'd... But now I'm like, okay, so what's going on with this person? They're reacting in that way for a particular reason. We are, we're great interpreters of trauma. Yeah. That's what actors are. Mm. We can interpret it, trauma. Yeah. You know, that's that's the whole point of why I wanted to start teaching. Yeah. You know, is that I found that all fascinating. Yeah. yeah. A bully is not just a bully. No. You know what I mean? No, totally. Yeah. There's, there's so much totally more going on. There's something wrong, you know, there's... Yeah something not quite right there mm. and for a bully to be uh, to well i wouldn't say a bully but somebody that's going through something that and they go into drama then they can see it from the other side as well yeah and it opens those doors don't yeah, it like it's great I, I think it's like a superpower but it's also a proper weakness because it's like you're empathetic as but and you can see things from the other side which is great but then it often can make you quite it's like analysis paralysis for me. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? Where it's yeah. just like, I proper want to be fucked off with you. Yeah. But I get why you're a cunt, because I am as well. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I can never, whereas people, when they get angry with me, I'm like, I get why you're angry with me. At the same time, I wish you understood. I wish you just had that more empathetic, uh, you know, attribute to you. Yeah. Because then we probably wouldn't be here, but then we probably won't get anywhere either. So mm. it's good and it's bad, isn't it, really? Mm. But if you use it right, it's... It's a powerful, powerful team. I've had yeah. an argument for a very long time. But I think <laughs> that surprises me. Behave, <laughs> 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 But I think, I suppose I get that out with my acting. Yeah. Like yeah. I do release yeah. a lot of that yeah, yeah, pent yeah. up. Well, we are getting a madness. lot of time to express that at the moment, aren't you? <laughs> Why is that, George? He just loves it. I just want to get it out, but I'm not going to, don't worry. Don't worry about it. I know, yeah, just relaxed. I'm just so excited he's proud for it. He's so yeah. proud of you. He's, he's so proud. proud. I can really tell you're embarrassed, but also he's so proud of you. Oh, I am. I we're am. all proud of yeah. you. Oh. We're all proud Every of time you. I've spoken to someone, I'm like, um, oh, uh, yeah, oh, by the way, have you heard? They're like, no, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> this is my get in. Well, it. Natalie Gavin, fuck, you know, like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I, I always love ending the conversation. We'll go, you know, she has grafted for over 15 years. You know, she's chipped away this young lady and bum, bum, bum. Okay, you know what? Messages on people this. I haven't spoken to for ages going, oh, well done. And I'm like, <laughs> What do you mean? Well, then, yeah, then um, you. Oh, thank you. And they were like, spoken to George. <laughs> George has told me you're exciting. You. Uh, yeah, but I am the biggest celebrator. You did it. You yeah. left me a voice message oh. saying, spoken to George. Well done, oh, well, mate. Well, well, there's that thing you. with actors, like, you know, and I, I, I've been a, a victim of it. When you get a job, that actors sort of go inclusive and then start to become, not hateful, but like, uh, not envy, but more jealous. I'm just like, they, that culture is really bad and it's old school culture and like actually actors Sharon Duncan Brewster taught it me actually and she always you know you know Sharon she always used to say celebrate people's success yeah, yeah. because it's one of us it's, it is a part of our community and yeah. since that day three years ago it has stuck with me and just turned my whole you know if somebody gets a job like a big job or a small job I've just buzzed for them yeah. it's that yeah. positive outlet and just like yeah. fucking and she's so private like she doesn't fucking tell anyone yeah, yeah, yeah. surprised she even told her mum she she told me, I said, well, I'm celebrating for you. Do you know what I mean? Uh, Do you know what? Because I've made that mistake, though, where my first ever job was Shameless. Um, they did bring me back, so but I did have a, a little part in it. And I was so buzzing. I told everybody I knew, got everybody around, the, the air date we're on, with telly, family, ever get together. Nothing. I got cut out. Oh, chopped. I put it all over oh. social media and they were like, mate, where are you? Where are you? And I was like, this is a devastating you feeling. And I thought that will never happen yeah. again. Mm. Yeah. I'm not ever going to do that again. Yeah. And even when I've done the job, I still like keep it until I've seen it and go, all right, yeah, I've done this. You can see this. It's good. Yeah. Because I'm just like, 
I'm not gonna be there. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So I, I've, I've always sort of held back, yeah, for sure. And told a circle of friends, and George then told a wider circle. Of friends. wider circle of friends. But it's, I, it's nice. It's purely it's really out of love. Nice though. I just celebrate success. Yeah. Because it, it's one of us. It's yeah. it's part of our community. Mm. I won't include you that because you're. <laughs> and ev- and every every actor will feel that. I mean that. There is competitiveness, you know, yeah. and, and it, if you can keep it as healthy and as manageable as possible, yeah, that's the best totally. way. But I mean, I've certainly have not. I have gone through stages of envy and jealousy. Yeah, and we all have. Rage. We all have. She's a dancer. <laughs> <laughs> She's a dancer. She got my job. And then you see, it, you know, you see them at the auditions. I said she. Um, I said I won't say names. But then. I got to a point where I go, what am I doing? Yeah. This, is, this is not a healthy yeah, place yeah. to be. The energy is all wrong. Yeah. So every time, and I've met people in meetings as well that I've actually stayed in touch with. We've yeah. gone up at the same part, but we've had chats, you know, we've had laughs and yeah. we've just wished each other good luck. It and puts you at ease as well, doesn't it? Like yeah. massively, like if you're, if this is a sofa where you've got like six people waiting for a thing, we all know why we're there. Yeah. And not addressing the elephant in the room creates this weird tension. Yeah. Whereas, like you say, I used to be quite similar at a very young age, a bit like, you know, oh, this is the competition. Yeah. But realise you don't get anywhere, and now I'm pretty much going through people's lives. Well, if you want it, I'll help you out. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? But it's that whole thing of it's like, I'm doing it for you to relax you, but in turn, it's relaxing me yeah. to be sat here in silence. And like you say, let's support each other. Just what you were saying, this community. Yeah, Even though we're in an audition room and we're all going for it, there's somebody that's going to get it. And, you know. But I think, I think it's more embedded now after COVID because for the first time ever in our history no matter if you were sean bean or somebody just leaving drama school everyone was in the same boat yeah. no one was working you know you had people the likes of jason manford like volunteering just to occupy his time do you know what I mean? and other actors do things that was beautiful and i think what that's done is it's grounded every single actor in the country mm. and i think now people have become much more supportive of each other i think the best advice i can give is celebrate people's success mm. and always remember if you don't get a job you know, a phone call tomorrow or next week can change the course of your career. Yeah, no. You know, celebrate people's success. It's so important. Yeah. Positivity breeds positivity. Yes. And it's not worth one's mental health to bring someone down because somebody else got the job. That person's completely different yeah. to yeah. you. You know, I've raged before and she's had to remind me as a friend, as an actor, but a friend to go, well, He's completely different to you, George. Yeah. And you have to realise and go, they've you gone with somebody think. else. Yeah. And it's out of your control. Yeah. yeah. You sort of have a good understanding of that. Like, it, it's it's logistics. It could be yeah. that the other person is ever so slightly more alike the, yeah. like the mother or, or the brother yeah. or the partner or the kid. Just completely out of your it's, control. Yeah. Are you noticing as well, like, working more? And again, we'll talk about <laughs> it in a bit. Like, obviously, we us guys have made films together. But, like, working more now behind the camera, yeah. you just caught, totally again get this bigger, wider perspective yeah. of when you walk into an audition and it's you, there's this tunnel vision, yeah. isn't there? Because you've got to focus, you need to get things done, you want to, you know, obviously show great etiquette, you want to be on form and all of that. But again, then you get so zoned in on it's me, it's me, it's me, it's me, it's me. Yeah. But then when you're on the other side of the desk and three people walk in on that tunnel vision, you start to see patterns and as an actor, you can then go, well, as a wide range, I can see all these people that have got this fear, but then when you sat at the other side of the desk, you're just like, well, it's just, it paints a clearer picture of what the attitude more than the performance that yeah, you need. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Like yeah, it just sure. kinda, you sit down there and think, well, you know, I, I know the performance wise, but sometimes I'm, you get so caught up in, this person's a producer and this person's this and that, when you forget that you sat opposite people. Yeah. Like literally Massively people. So. And instead you, you put this, the role above them and and it makes it scarier it makes it more manufactured it makes it more artificial Mm. and it's like i want one thing i think definitely is just working on the other side as well as still doing acting every time that you do that and you guys are going to get it with teaching it's a similar perspective it just widens your periphery is it is that the word something like that um but yeah talking about films that we made together we made rv together didn't we real voices Yeah, yeah yeah And we haven't chatted about that yet, have we? No, no, we haven't. Uh, like, at all on camera? Really? No, not really, no, no, yeah. Tell um, us a bit about it, guys. So, yeah, Real Voices is a, it was a short film um, funded by Essential Safeguard in which we were both producers on. And it was quite a, a high budget for a short film for the amount of days it was. And we had a good cast of 
people who've been in it for a long time, person with profile, mixture of complete newcomers. And the, the short film next year will go into festivals and we're going to put some premiers on the show and it basically just raises awareness around county lines and uh, child sexual exploitation and how criminality in rural areas is a massive uh, crises in this country mm. and that was one of the interesting things and originally it was a play what we used to tour around schools and like local uh, theatres to build awareness around in the communities but then Covid basically made us think let's get this out on a wider scale and get it into some film festivals to bring some credibility to it. And that's how it started. Natalie came on board as a co-producer with me just because she's got an amazing eye. Uh, and after she directed her play, which done really well, hasn't it, Bobby? Yeah. yeah. Um, I watched that short film book. Maybe I need to get Natalie on it just so she can help <laughs> us out a little bit. And then obviously we've collaborated before on projects where I've been like an associate producer and you've been the production company. So I just wanted to partner with you straight away because I just think we know each other's styles we know what I'm like as a producer I know what you're like as a director we know how to deal with Rob we know how to deal with bank woman over there Ruby who just like absolutely budgets everything but um and then charges me extreme amounts but yeah it was, it's a good piece of uh, film and hopefully we're going to show it on the 5th and then we'll, I'd like to have a screen in here when a lot of professionals can come and watch and get people who can bring some credibility to the actual project is that good? That's yeah, good. That's very, very good. good. Absolutely. Makes total sense. I think it were really nice for me to work with you guys on. We'd done some stuff with Actra TV and the uh, FebFest stuff. Yeah. And it were nice working on like short three page things that were all vastly different from each other. Yeah. With no time to do it, not much budget, but it were all about the creativity and it was fun. Yeah. But then when Real Voices came around, it were a project that you guys had worked on as a play for a long time. Yeah. It was one consistent, nice, big, chunky story over about yeah. 30 odd pages. And so it were a chance to go, well, for four days, we're doing one story, uh, fixed cast, yeah. and it was really fun. I love it, yeah. A flash of Izzy and, and that, that scene in the in the house. It's David one up me, or that last... Oh, I don't think, on oh, jump as well. Yeah, but everyone who's seen it, and I've Raw. sent it to quite a lot, I've sent it to some, you know, producers at the BBC, I've sent it to some casting directors, I've sent it to some, you know, actors who've been in the business a long time, the feedback has come back. It's been amazing and saying you need to get it out, you need to get it out, but then I'm just like holding it. Just, <laughs> just keeping it close yeah, to Yeah, I'm chest. just waiting because, you know, a lot of people are now, even though we've been doing it for years, have jumped on the bandwagon, quite rightly so, you know, because people are, are making it aware. But I'm just holding on to that little gem and then I want to get it when, you know, film festivals stop becoming viral. I, I think people need to be in a room together and watch it to mm. be able to feel, you know, what it's like when you watch that scene with Izzy and Mike, it's like, fuck. Oh, like, intense oh, yeah it? you know you know but i think people need to be in the room because humans like i said before are sponges you feel off each yeah, other yeah feel off like, each other vibes exactly you know um so hopefully yeah but bobby bobby's another really important film you should speak about bobby yeah another massive issue in this i country. have seen bobby but tell me tell me um it all started with uh, a monologue that i was going to work on with my students at tv <laughs> And when I, I've never wanted to write anything, never inspired, never been severely dyslexic, didn't think I'd be able to put two and two together uh, for anybody else to be able to understand. So I read this monologue and this monologue was um, a, a gentleman taking these two people round his family home and they were showing him room from room and discussing uh, an experience or a memory and he goes to his brother's bedroom and he, I think you, you slowly start to get an idea that he's not, he's no longer there. And then he opens up the bathroom door and explains what had happened to him. But you learn so much about that particular person in such a short space of time. And the way that he was describing his brother just, I was like, I know this person. I know this person. So I decided to respond that person and then I created Bobby um, but with is that going to be a real problem it stopped <laughs> um, I thought then I thought, <laughs> I thought it's going to go any minute yeah. so just keep going <laughs> and then it never I, 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 was, I was just thinking why are we not evacuating because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's television darling um, so yeah I then responded but I also had influences um, from somebody close to me very close to me who suffers with male mental health um, and I've seen all different 
aspects of, of that and experienced different sides of that. And I think, um, I thought it was just really important to not hide um, the monologue and the, the shot that is Bobby is very invasive. There's nowhere for you to escape. Mm. Um, and it's important, I think, mm. for people to see that. So what Bobby, what you do see is you get um, a real idea of, of where he lives and how he lives. Um, but there's, there's also hoarding involved in there as well, which is another sign of mental health. Mm. Um, it's sort of barricading yourself in. His partner is struggling. You don't see the face of the partner, which is really in, um, interesting that a lot of people have mentioned her and her story and how it affects her life as well, living with someone with male mental health. But literally, you don't see a face. Um, you don't need to. No, He's got, this character yeah, works yeah. better because people put an idea of what that face is for them. Yeah, all. yeah. Mm. <laughs> and he's got the responsibility of being a, a parent. Um, also, she has, she's got postnatal depression. And you find him having um, a conversation, leaving a voice message to his brother, somebody that he feels like he can open up to, but his brother's not answered. So you get a real mixed um, set of emotions of him really struggling with being proud of his brother and that his brother's doing really well and he isn't and the reflection of seeing himself in the mirror and, and how he's just struggling with his feelings and emotions mm. and it and where that can lead to if you don't seek help mm. um, yeah it's a lovely film it's a lovely film. like you say it's it's a hard watch yeah but um I would just kind of, I just went into a bit of a daydream and then I just find it amazing. The last time you was here was about a year and odd ago. Yeah. And you were sat here and I were like asking you about, are you going to write something? And you were like, I don't think I've got it in there. And you were like, I'm waiting for something to happen. Yeah. And we were chatting about it and I'm sure Adam will put it in B-roll in the edit. No way, yeah, I do. I just do something. Mm. Do you do read. any writing or? Nah, no. No. You never tried. fancied it? I've got an idea that I want to develop. Um, and it's a film. Mm. Um, that I've, I don't feel brave enough. Not yet. Not oh, yet. Okay. I think I will. But the process of that is pretty intense. Yeah. I've seen a few of my friends go through it. Um, I've seen a lot of setbacks and a lot of... Um, it's a different world. Knocks. It's horrible. Yeah. Oh. Um, I don't know if I'm quite ready for that yet. Yeah. But there is something on the back burner, but it's, it'd be devised. Nice. Um, because I like that process. Yeah. And you saying, you know, like, oh, maybe one day I'll have a crack at it, I don't know. And the next time that I've seen you, you've already done it. Yeah. It's round festivals. And it got getting, nominated. It got I know, nominated it's been nominated, it's getting shot. acclaimed. I'm just so chuffed for you. Oh, thank you. It's a great film, it's great, it's lovely. I really enjoyed watching it. Very exposing. Yeah. Yeah. I'm Absolutely. Cool. And a lot of people that I've spoken to as well that have, have seen it have said that they can relate to it in a new way, which was really important because then they tell me why they can relate to it. And it's about speaking about you know, and not being afraid and it's okay not to be okay yeah. and all these things. It's so important to um The reason express. the film exists, Yeah. Mm. that's the response that's drawing people out, which is amazing. Not only the story it's telling, but the response it's gaining, yeah. which is just fabulous. Mm. It's not going to go away. We're, we're working, hopefully, going to start working alongside, once it's out of the film festivals, with Andy Mann's Club. Mm. They are on point. That's literally their sign. <laughs> Every time I say Andy Mann's Club, I go... Tch! That's their hashtag. <laughs> it's okay to, you know, speak up, yeah. talk. It's okay to talk. Um, so, yeah, hopefully we can get people talking and feeling that, you know, it's okay not to be okay. Mm. It's, it's the... Don't let it get to that. Yeah, yeah. Go you, Nat. Really chuffed. Thank really, you. really chuffed. Thank you. Let's, um... Let's talk about the big boy, shall we? What... And I don't, I don't know how much you can say. And the good thing is, I ain't really tried to you at all about it. And for the people at home, I guess we can, because obviously George has told everybody. <laughs> I've, I've, told, I've told people that know Natalie, and I know would appreciate Natalie. You know, success, who understand success, Natalie's success. graft, what she's yeah, done. Absolutely. I've only told people I've not gone to like people, you know, complete strangers. Gone, oh my god, have you heard that? Yeah, <laughs> Nail. <laughs> it's only I know who would celebrate that and and be chuffed. You know. Because, um, like I said, she has chipped away for a very long time, and she's played regulars. Mm. Do you know what I mean? You've played a lot of regulars in dramas, but this time you're going to play a regular, which you, you know you, you're going to weep. The creative opportunity, probably, which you've not had 
before in other jobs. Mm-hmm. A chance to really s- s- step your foot yeah, in. Yeah, and well, really like, have, yeah. you know. Get your teeth stuck. I, I hope really so. have. Imagine if it got cut out. <laughs> yeah, <but laughs> yeah. I, I suppose the, the position that she's going into now is she's going to have power, creative power. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Which you've earned. You've earned, you've earned yeah. the stripes for, so that's what I'm chuffed about, because I know how creative and depthful she is. There's a lot of depth when it comes to Natalie, so now she's actually going to get the opportunity to go, um, I want to track, do you know what I mean? Yeah. You deserve that. So let's talk about it a little bit. So I don't know how much you can say and how much you can't say, um, but I know nothing about it. But all I do know is obviously at the minute you're working on a great project. Um, for Netflix. How have you found it? For Netflix. Is yeah. it for Netflix? It is, yeah. The big, the big N. Yeah. Um, Tell us a little bit about it, what you can tell us at least, even maybe a little bit of the process of you uh, going for the meeting or a little bit of context about the story, just whatever you can, we'd love to hear some of it. Okay, um, it's a, an eight part series um, for Netflix called Red Rose, um, and it's a psychological thriller. Nice. Which is amazing. You know, as a kid growing up, or if, you, if you think that you, you, know, you want to be an actor, you, there's there's a certain things, isn't there, that you start practicing in the mirror or sort of getting a, a good vibe for and being frightened. One. <laughs> I do recall, you know, if I hear an, uh, an unexpected noise in the house, I've always gone, what's that? And I go, what's my face doing? Scare face, scare face. You know what I mean? Everybody, every actor's done it, George. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Uh, yeah, oh no, big time, scared, yeah. Scared, scared. And I've always wanted to, to tackle it. Uh. Yeah, you have. Yeah, you have. <laughs> oh my god! No, honestly, I do. I talk to myself in the mirror all the time. So do I, you? I oh, yeah. Not in the mirror, but I mean, just you know, going to find out what that noise is and going, you know, if this were a horror, yeah, like, yeah. maybe it is just me. But I used to do it for creeping down for Weetabix at two a.m. in the morning, but it just used to be this whole kind of thing. Of, we might as well get lost in it now. Aren't we? Yes. And like you say, it's like the rate Weetabix. This is like a, an artifact that I've got to go <laughs> get. Got to go get from like a tomb. Exactly. And just creeping past monsters as your parents yeah, there are snoring. You go. I get I get it, I get you know, it. Role play. 100. Well, I've definitely done it. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I've always wanted to do that. So if I had to describe it, um, I'd say it was fa- like Final Destination. Okay. Sort of the use of technology. I'd say that it was like the Saw films, there's gameplay. Nice. And I'd say, if you've seen 13 Reasons Why, it's, it's you know, it's youthful. Okay. Um, Sounds like a great mix. But it's northern. <laughs> oh, the cherry on top of the cake. Yeah. It's northern. Yeah. And it's northern. Amazing. Where have you been filming then? Bolton. Bolton? Yeah. Lovely. How long's the shoot gone on for? Well, we are. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is COVID. Yeah. Um, so we have had a few hiccups along yeah. the way. But, um, so it has extended things. But. As, a, as is, should be... I suppose it's un- unavoidable hiccups, oh, though, isn't it? Oh, 100, yeah. And to keep everybody safe and, yeah. you know, there's, there's what you need to do, what you need to do. So um, it's looking like November, probably it's, it's finish, finishing, but we started in June. Okay. Well, it's not too bad. No, no. It's not too bad at all. And what, so we're looking at 2022? Yeah, uh, I think they pinpointed it loosely, June, July. Excellent. I'm so excited. Yeah. I'm so excited. We'll have you back when it's on anyway. I actually have, look like me. Do you look like you? I actually look like me, which I'm going to find really strange because every character I've played, Ackley Bridge, yeah. holes in my face, <laughs> hair absolutely super glued to my head, um, leather boots, all that. That's not me. That yeah, one's, yeah. Um, not leather me. coat, I know. <laughs> it's a gift. Um, I like it very much. It's actually quite nineties, but anyway, it's very nineties. It's a bit. It's very nineties. I like yeah. the nineties. I'm liking I, I the nineties vibe. I'm excited. I think I'm going to find it really difficult because I've always managed to separate myself from the characters that I'm playing mm-hmm. because visually, I believe I don't look like them really. No. Um, so this one's very much like me. Um, the budget and the costume. Costume class. Andy Man's Club. Hmm. <laughs> is on point. Like I'm literally going to buy everything at the end. Oh. Um, stylist hair, it's, it's all very much to my taste. So I don't know whether I'm going to like that watching it because I think it's important to watch your stuff. Do you watch your stuff? No. Do you watch your stuff? You I, say never, no? I never really? used stuff. Now I never used to for like 10, 15 years, couldn't stand it. But then as I've got a little bit older, I've been forced to have to because I've been editing a bit of it yeah, right. yeah, and yeah. it got me used to about two years ago when we were editing Hattie 
No, oh, I had brilliant. To, I had to look at me. So we're going to watch that on the event as well. You've not um, seen it, have no. you? Oh, it's brilliant. I cried after watching it. <laughs> Don't set it up now. You've know, given it a yeah. big set up, haven't know, you? Yeah, yeah. Um, but anyway, I, I, and I were in that as well as directing it. The first thing that we kind of tried as a group when everybody got together, the team. And um, I just had to force myself to get used to it because I was 100 hours of editing it and looking going, you fucking look terrible. Um, and it would just, and then, you know, getting you over this and over that. But by the time it all put together, I would just like, well, I kind of feel like I've got over that initial, mm. you know, when you first on them, I, I couldn't do it. Mm. I couldn't never watch it. But anyway, go on. Can you watch yourself? I, but might, I, I understand it's a That might process. make me cringe now because I've, I've, I have always, but that's I, I always looked so different and this time I'm not gonna. Mm. So I might experience that. <gasps> Cause you, yeah, there's no separation. Yeah. I was going to say, when you were talking, it's really cool, isn't it? I've only had it on a couple of jobs where mainly people dress me like me. Yeah. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, with, with me, you, you, you're getting what you're getting, if you know what I mean. Like, you know what you're going for. So, but there's been a few parts where I've been, you know, like, physically changed. And I look in the mirror and it's just had so much. You don't mm. recognise yourself. You're just like, that's the fuel I need. Here yeah, we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's a bit of a bigger hump to go over when you look in the mirror and you're like, hey, Natalie. Oh, wait, shit, it's not Natalie. Oh, God, yeah. It's not Natalie. And then they're like, you're on set. And you're like, okay. So yeah, there is there is a fine line to do that, but, but again, it's only gonna stretch you further, isn't it? If you know what I mean? It's gonna be interesting. Yeah. I'm excited. I'm so excited for you. It's I can't wait show. to see it. Well, you yeah. know I'm excited for you. So. George is very excited. George, yeah, totally. I can't wait excited. to see it. What have you been up to, Georgie boy? <laughs> I'm very excited <laughs> for him. Uh, no, not uh, little bits. Like I, I done a, a chil Well, I've never done children's television before, and I, I, I done a TV series. I play a regular on a new TV series, and I can't say because I've not even been announced yet. But I done that. It was quite lucky, really, straight after Christmas, which was about two and a half months because they film so fast into each kids, you know, because it's all studio based. So yeah, I done that, and then I've done um, a little bits on two other things, uh, some Corrie, and then I've done another project where I've done a couple of days, which was great. So a quite a relatively quiet year, but very lucky to be able to work in such strenuous times, I think. Yeah. I actually, the new experience for me, and I learnt loads, was the kids' TV series, and I think we're going to go back next year and do it. No, this year. End of this year, going to do it. Um, for series two, like, that was a real learning curve for me. Uh, it was just a different style altogether. Mm. Um, fastest turnaround I've ever seen, you know, being based in studios. Because all the jobs what I've done before where I've played regulars on has always been on location. Because yeah. drama like that rarity and like, yeah. you know, um, um, bespoke kind of settings for locations. Reality. Reality, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's to, for depth and truthfulness and where studios are just fast. It was weird walking mm. to a studio and thinking, wow, it actually looks like that. <laughs> <laughs> really bizarre. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've done that. Um, Talking about speed just as a side note. Have you ever done doctors? No. Done casualty. Okay. Well, That's casualty is a different bag though. I've done casualty twice. Slightly different bag. Doctors, if you think that there is fast TV, doctors is fucking mental. Really? Like, I'm thinking I'm doing a line run and the rats, they're not next thing. Stop <laughs> Stop I'm not, I'm not even kidding you, right? I could Thanks, drop this water bottle and by the time it's finished, three scenes are down. Three scenes are done. It's what? like, I'm not kidding you, it's like, it's super And you've fast. done soap. Yeah, and, and soap's it's fast. Faster, and, faster yeah. than soap. Faster than soap, and it's got less cameras. I'm like, how are we even doing this? I'm like, I didn't even know we'd turned over yet. The guy's oh. already unpacking his shit back in the van. I'm like, what is going on here? Oh, no. So, so speed-wise, uh, and I, I'm sure kids' TV is fast, but I just wanted to check if either of you done Doctors, because it's a running no. joke. It, whoever's done Doctors, people are just no. like... What are you doing? Yeah. I, I, and... So sorry, because I need to get something off my chest. No, it's okay. like, oh no! <laughs> no, like um, I know, next year I'm going to do uh, a musical which I've never done before, and I'm not a singer oh. or a dancer. Wow! Yeah. Go you. Oh. Is it going to be like a comedy singing on West End? Yeah, I think it's. I think my parts. Well, I know what part it is, but comedy, dancing, and singing. But I've never done it before, so I'm going to go out of my comfort zone. That's really good. And I, I think like for people who can't sing, you'd be surprised for people who. And I'm not saying you can't sing. <laughs> I can't. Go on, again. George. You can sing. He can sing. Oh, you have to pay for that, really. <laughs> you get you on stage at party. Oh, yeah, I'm sure that'll happen. Karaoke. <laughs> our, our warm up song, George. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, I can see it there. We've got it, guys, but I think we're running out of time. Um, That's because she's took like most of it. I feel like I could talk forever. Yo, she so took most of it, haven't you? It's just based in Natalie's so Q&A. <laughs>
<laughs> and just a warm so up. I'm going to cut it together as well. It's just him talking all the time. <laughs> but and it just feels like it's and all then, big Natalie. And then Natalie just going, yeah, right, yeah. yeah. yeah, <laughs> it, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Um, well, thank you very much. What a wonderful studio you have. I'm very excited to come on the 5th. I'd like to make a quick observation of Hattie. Yes. Because we've not touched on it. And Hattie, I, I seen two years ago, um, uh, you show, we were quite lucky to see the trailer of the taster. Yeah. Oh, absolutely fucking brilliant. Like, oh, man. I'm excited. Yeah, it really touches for me. And I think that type of story Hattie is going to, it's going it, to, there's, there's different themes going and issues going ar around in that episode, what I've seen. But the biggest one for me is, oh my God, they're exposing mental health in actors. That's what I felt. And that's why I think I started to cry. Do you know what I mean? It was a beautiful... And when you said finger, I just thought, oh yeah, it's just going to be job about Johnny. Do you know what I mean? And like, blah, blah, blah. And I sat there and really appreciate... It. When you see me, I was like... And I was pissed at the time. <laughs> you crying. I went sober like that because I was so endorsed and so like committed to the story, what was being told. So I'm looking forward to seeing more of it. It's really So congratulations sweet, yeah. on that. No worries. Thank you. That's very exciting. We've, uh, we're just literally at the final ends of the bid out with Ruby to BFI and we've got the full series written and pretty much on the 5th we're going to give people a little taste we're going to show them what we did two years ago so we and then we're going to hit send are we going to be in it? Well, you're going to have to wait and see are you? that's a no <laughs> that's a no <laughs> <laughs> that was a cop off baby <laughs> Natalie's like at me we've already started <laughs> I know, yeah. Which one's that? Oh, well, you'll have to see. Yeah, you won't be in it, love. <laughs> but I suppose it's a really nice um, it's a really nice thing to end on because, you know, like, just talking about the future, we've yeah. just started this and this is all going and, you know, we want you guys to be a big part of it in this big community. And Thank so you. it's great that we've got you down as one of the first people on the new sofa and, and can't patrons. thank you enough. And patrons as well. And patrons. Yeah. I want to work with you loads more. We are going to be. It's going to be patrons? fabulous. You just made us patrons. Yeah. The treehouse. Yeah. We're going to cut the Can we ribbon. have his name above the door? I'm just, I'm, I only want two patrons and it's both you. <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to have massive Fantastic. pictures Can we sat yeah. on the wall. Can we sat Rob? Like, you know, like grand houses where yeah. there's people with pianos. Can we but... sat Rob? <laughs> Lose oh. him. Yeah. Why? Just just that fun. No. I'll see what he says. See what no, he says. well done. I'm really looking forward to um, seeing it again develop. This developed so much in a year. When I walked in a couple of weeks ago, I was like, you <laughs> yeah. that way. Like, you could it? take a mental image of from the, the what I've seen every time I've come in. It'd be it'd be fascinating. It'd yeah. be right mural on the wall. Yeah. Well Hopefully. done. Honestly. But you're also giving good opportunities to people like Freddie, who I've seen like over the last four years grow. <laughs> but like young people be getting involved in film. Yeah. And you know I've seen quite a few of them actually. Ruby seems next. to collect them. Um, <laughs> See, I, collect I have them. no concerns with how you're collecting them though, because they're all coming to learn, you know, behind the camera, so it's fine. I think we're timed. Oh, is that, it? Is, that, is that it? Right, we've got to do I've some yellow started, chair. Though. I've just started speaking. <laughs> <laughs> we've got to do some yellow chair, but guys, you've been amazing, and thank you so much. Thank you. No thank problem. you very much. I'll send you the um, invoice with VAT. Oh, well, wait for yellow chair. You're going to see it now. Does that mean we're going to have a quick break? Uh, yeah, it does. Hang on a minute. We've got to sign off first, oh. George. Fucking hell, he's in a rush yeah, to get home, isn't it? Straight foot fag. Yeah. And that's it for another episode of Isaac Chats. If you want to check out more episodes just like this one, you can head over to www.isaacoo.com. <laughs> uh, that's it from me, George and Nat. Much love, it's that one. It's ours. <laughs> Not ah. that one. Well, that or you, but this is us now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.